What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. The day in the world of indie games. We're going to be taking a look at Decision Red Days. This is a zombie apocalypse, I guess, RPG with a little bit of like tower defense in there too, I guess. This is kind of a hard one to really put your finger on, but if I had to describe it close to anything else, it would be State of Decay, but from a top-down perspective. But also, the defend your base portions are much more relevant than in State of Decay. The scavenging and all that other stuff is kind of like the secondary objective, but defending your base is like the main one. And so anyways, we're going to dive on in today. We're going to look at it for about 25 minutes or so. See if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list or otherwise pass on. The game is coming out fairly soon on Steam. So I figured now would be a good time to do it. You'll find a link down below if you wanted to get it. On top of that, there's a Discord and a Twitch stream down there just in case you wanted to hang out with me even more. But that's all I got for you for right now. So let's go ahead and dive on into the game. So in Red Days, really the game follows kind of this core formula where you will find a base and your goal is to activate a repeller. The repeller holds back the zombies from invading, except for like periodical incursions. And then you continue to build up that base until its reign of influence is so large. Did that guy just throw a rock at me? Aw, oh, dude, there's zombies invading. Don't like that. All right, hold on, I gotta crunch some zombies real fast. I can't properly describe the game to you because zombie crunching is on the horizon. There we go. Just crunch him up a little bit. Yep, ragdoll that guy. Man, the HP on this dude. He don't want to die. He don't want to die. I'm going to keep on smacking him. There we go. We got like a big combo off right there. Uh, so anyways, effectively the goal of the game is to build up bases until their influence incorporates another base. And then you take over that base and you start all over with the intention of repopulating the earth after everything has fallen apart. And so right now where we are is I've just taken over the second base. I was gonna show the game off from the beginning. There are kind of like videos and there are like intros to the game and stuff like that. Uh, they get you kind of all settled in with the lore. However, we've foregone that because I wanted to get you further on into the gameplay because like the first hour or so is probably not the most compelling part of the game. That's not where the game is like at its best and the most entertaining. And so what we need to do for right now is I've just captured this new camp. So we need to go out onto the map and we need to see if we can find some people and have them join our colony because your colony needs workers in order to get things done. So that's what I'm going to do. We're going to set off down the road. Actually, how's my inventory space? Bad. We're going to be looting a lot. So let me drop this stuff off real fast in the camp stockpile and then we'll go out and do all this stuff. Okay, now that I've done all the fun inventory management stuff, and we'll talk about that a little bit later because there is some stuff that I feel like the menus and kind of the interface in the game, I feel like it could be doing a little bit heavier of lifting. Oh, that's a lot of zombies, dude. I might regret this decision. Yeah, when you see these red patches on the maps, they're getting more sophisticated too, dude. Like the zombies in this game are kind of like Resident Evil zombies, I guess. Not even like Resident Evil zombies, like later Resident Evil zombies. They can shoot you with guns. They can throw rocks and things at you. They're generally a hazard and a nuisance. Like this one's got a gun over here. We'll take him out real quick. And then those dudes are now taken down. There's just the one level four guy over here. I don't think I'm going to have the energy to take him out. I'm only, like, level 2, so unfortunately, there's kind of a power-scaling disparity between... Oh, dif okay, okay. All right, yeah, I'm just getting kind of, like, don't mind me. I'm just over here getting chain-stunned, just getting knocked around. There we go, another zombie down. I'm going to try to get the one with the gun, too. Oh, the one with the gun is a level 4. Enjoyable. He's trying to get a beat on me. Oh, he pulled it off eventually. Oof, I've been wounded. Hold on, we gotta get away from this conflict right here, and I gotta use a med kit by pressing the 5 key. So on the interface, things that you are looking at as of right now, in the top left hand corner, the red bar is gonna be our health, the yellow bar is our stamina slash food meter. It does naturally decay over time, you will have to occasionally take in and imbibe the old vittles in order to keep yourself up and running. Uh, below that is our sleep meter, that's the white meter. We are currently playing Richard Chains because in this game you make a character at the beginning, but you're not forced to play that character the entire time. Instead, just like with State of Decay, you can actively hot swap in between your colonists and the people that are living inside of your town. And so anyways, uh, you will be starting out as Richard Chains, but there's really nothing saying you have to stay as Richard Chains for the duration of your playthrough. If you end up finding a character that you like better, uh, which happened to me very, very frequently when I was playing State of Decay, 
you could just hot swap over to that guy. Uh, in the top right-hand corner, we've got our mini-map. Little white dots on the mini-map are going to be lootable nodes. I would like it if in the overworld they actually put like a little glow on these things or like a little outline. Since they are already marked on the map, obviously like hiding and secrecy is not like a big deal here. So increasing the visibility in that case I think would not be a terrible idea. We should probably eat some food, but I think I've got enough energy left to wipe out another pack. I don't know that for certain. Oof, I got schlappity, dude. The zombies done schlappity'd me. Hey, sir, can you die, please? Thank you. Like, you don't all have to die, but I'd appreciate it if you would. Like, it's not mandatory. It's more of, like, a request. But it's, like, a serious request. Like, it's a request that I'm giving you with grim determination. Thank you. Uh, the zombies are lootable occasionally when you kill them. Usually they'll drop like some loot. Everything in this game has been conceptualized down into like simple resources. Uh, so for example, the game does not have like transistors and wires and circuit boards and stuff like that and, and wood. It all just gets reduced down to materials and then you use those materials to build stuff. It doesn't have like wrist watches and it doesn't have like earrings and stuff like that. Instead, it just reduces it down to loot. And so anyways, there's only like five or six resources in this game that you need, but I do find that the simplicity of it makes it easy to keep track of like what you need in order to build up certain base components and keep things going. The game also has quests. Once we have colonists and things that are living inside of our town, they will offer us procedurally generated quests uh, to go out and defeat monsters or to collect certain things or to get to certain points and like survey. It's up to you if you want to take those. You get a resource that's called... Uh, I believe, God, what was the name of the resource? It's like respect or something like that. And if you have enough respect, then you can add more people into your squad. And you can fiddle with their equipment. And you can, like, bring them on in and have, like, a little five-man running around just wrecking zombies. No, oh, there's another level four zombie. I'm not good enough to fight level four zombies. Uh, your skills in this game, you may have noticed in the bottom left-hand corner, it said our melee went up to level 19. Uh, this game basically operates off the Bethesda principle, which is like you have skills. The more you use them, the more they level up. So if you shoot guns, you'll get better at shooting guns. If you smack people with an axe, you'll get better at smacking people with an axe. So on and so forth. You know, you do med kits on yourself, it increases your medical skill. I don't actually see anybody recruitable around here. Normally, they're really, really visible on the mini-map. So let me look around for a second so that I don't waste our 30 minutes here not getting anything done. Hey, I think we've got a survivor down here. There we are. So recruiting a survivor in this game is actually really, really easy. You just walk up and press E, and they join you. That's it. There's no, like, quest. There's no requirement. You're just like, hey, I see that you're living out in the booty-ass desert with no resources, half-starving, huddled around a barrel fire. Would you perhaps like to be a part of my greater civilization? And honestly, they just keep signing up. They don't really seem to mind altogether that much. I do have a gun. I try to use it, like, the minimum amount that I possibly can. It's not because there's any, like, noise radius or, like, punishment for using a firearm in this game, which, honestly, I'm pretty happy for. I, I feel like there's enough zombie games out there that really, really de-incentivize using a firearm. And so, like, I kind of like that this game's a little bit more arcadey and lets me just, like, shoot a gun whenever I want with no consequences. Uh, but there is a trade-off here. Uh, so if you look at the top of the screen, you can see my ammo next to that little R icon right there. Uh, basically, ammo in this game is also a building resource. So if you're building defenses or whatever, you're going to need ammo in order to get that done. And so every time you fire a bullet, you're potentially using up a resource that you can't really get back. I'll save you. I saved your life. You owe me that. All right, let's take her back to town and drop her off. I don't know. Actually, we don't really have that much influence. Our other town is also about to be attacked tomorrow. So I should probably head back over there and help them out with the defense. But I am feeling kind of lazy, so like I don't I feel like they can hold on their own. That's what I feel like anyways. Like I feel like they're going to be okay. Uh, so now that we've dropped her off here, if we talk to her, she will have like quests and things. We can ask them for their backstory. The game is very like procedural with regards to like the generation of the characters. Each one of them has like an entire life backstory. And it doesn't matter at all. It's just flavor. It's just flavor that gets added on. We can see here that she's an engineer, which is actually pretty important because our town is going to need an engineer if it's going to get by. So basically, in order to construct buildings of differing grades and qualities, uh, you basically need to fulfill a number of stat requirements uh, that are the combined skill of everybody in your camp. 
And if you don't have that, it just flatly does not work. And so anyways, uh, you definitely want to have engineers, you want to have builders, you want to have medics, you want to have all those people. Otherwise, just things aren't going to go very well for you. Let's go ahead and fast travel. Oh, apparently I don't have enough stamina to fast travel. Bummer, my doodles. I'm still going to sleep it off, and hopefully we can make it over there in time. So it looks like they're potentially under attack right now. We'll go back to the central camp. There we go. And so we've got an attack incoming. I'm going to whip out the axe real fast. This is the previous settlement that I set up. As you can see, it's got like a machine gun turret. It's got like a radio and some other little things going on. We've got like seven or eight people here that are all capable of kind of like fighting and defending the homeland. And so we got to fight off a raid. Every now and again, your towns are going to get attacked. And this is where the game really kind of seeks out to differentiate itself from State of Decay. So in State of Decay, like the attack is really more of a social mechanism. Like, you don't have to go back. Like, I don't think in State of Decay ever have I had one of my little areas get knocked over by the zombies just because I didn't attend to the defense. I assume that it can happen, but I've played, like, a lot of State of Decay, and I've never seen it happen. In this game, you actually kind of want to fall back and help out with it. Like, you're sort of... You're not, like, the leader, but you are kind of like the leader, and so it's probably good to be over here and just sort of be involved in the fisticuffs melee. Plus, it's supplying us with materials that I can take to other spots. Uh, I'll, I will take the crowbar. I don't really want the zombie harness. I don't know if I have enough respect. What do you want, Frank? How do I make a combat squad? Try adding a man to your squad. I don't know if I have enough respect to actually do that. However, Jorge Miranda might be helpful. Oh, cool. Nice. So, Jorge, I actually had enough reputation to add him to my party. Uh, he's a builder, so I kind of need him to go back to that other town with me. I'm going to run him over there, but I'm going to edit it out. But I need him to be back at basically like the stone block place with me because I need a, I need a builder over here. I have an engineer. Now I need like one more guy. You do have an equipment menu in this game. I figured I'd show it off while I was fiddling with my equipment menu anyways. Uh, you do have an equipment menu. You can equip things. Uh, the menus, I think, are utilitarian. They're, like, fine for what they're trying to do. However, uh, you're not able to drag and drop things. So, like, if I wanted to equip this crowbar, I can't drag and drop it. Instead, you got to right-click on it, and then it'll swap it out for whatever your melee weapon is. It's not, like, a huge inconvenience. It's just, like, one of those things where I would like the ability to drag and drop and move things around. Looks like I've picked up a little bit of equipment around here, too. What's the details on that? Oh, it gives you agility, and it gives you charisma. Yeah, I'll take that. There we go. We all gang ganged out now. Dang, we're like a rider, dude. Okay, so we made it back with Jorge. On top of that, the cool thing here is that I also found another guy who actually looks like he's got really good equipment. He's got like body armor and stuff on. Uh, so we'll go ahead and drop him off back at camp. And hopefully he'll join. Dude, he's walking like he's going to his own execution right now. It's not that bad around here. Like, yes, does this location act as like a CDC hotspot? for tetanus infections it absolutely does but can we help that no we really can't that's just the way that it goes so what do you do you're a ranger oh he's the same class that i am rangers are really good at moving around the map and looting okay so what kind of stuff can i do over here well we could increase the radius if we can get our settlement defense up so I've got to raise the defense rating of this settlement. So basically inside each settlement, you'll have a number of different stats. The ultimate goal is to go through and fix your repeller. But if you take a look at the upgrades that I want to get, basically we need to have some money inside storage. We need to have engineering skill and we needed to have settlement defense. And so settlement defense naturally goes up the more people that you have in your camp because you can put them on guard duty to augment that. And then on top of that, it's also the towers and things that you have around uh, that make that worthwhile. I actually don't know if I can build up the towers over here just yet. Uh, we do have the building skill by nature of Jorge being with us. So yeah, we'll go ahead and start that off over there. And then on this side, we will do similarly. I don't know how much defense this is going to give me, but I do want to... I want to increase the operational radius of my of my base it's just gonna make life a little bit easier so it looks like we get a plus two for each one of these towers that we put up so we'll put one up right there and then there's another one on the south end of camp 
we'll go ahead and pick this one up right here too there we go and so by tomorrow we should actually have a seriously large amount of defense ready to go so that we can start upgrading some of the basic tenets of our base and getting it up and running so on the next day what you'll see or at least nighttime anyways i took a little nap to get my meters refilled but what you will see is that now we have sandbag gun turrets on each side of the base and if you have enough people living inside of your base they will naturally come on over here and they will man the barricades in their free time to take care of it. You can also perma assign somebody to it, but that takes a little bit more effort. So I can increase the radius high frequency sound waves that repel the infected. We can expand the coverage radius. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. We'll put it up to that level right there because I think we need to go find some more survivors. I don't think that that baited an attack, so we should be all right. And between me and Jorge now, I think what I'd like to do is let's go see if we can grab some of these random survivors that are around. Well, there's kind of like a wall of the undead over here that I need to take care of. Combat in this game is very, very simple. They've gone with kind of a hack and slash direction. And that's pretty much it. You left click in order to beat the zombies to death. Uh, you right click to take out and put away your weapon. And then space gives you a dodge roll. But I don't think there's any particular, like... I don't think you get iframes or anything while you're in the dodge roll. It's not a particularly sophisticated system. But then again, like, I really enjoyed Darkwood too, and Darkwood didn't particularly have, like, a crazy sophisticated combat system. And so I don't really think that the brawling combat is kind of the point of this game. It's more about, like, the scavenging and things of that nature. One thing that I haven't really noticed is that after, like, the opening intro video, they don't really go out of their way to sort of, like show the game world to you I guess and so like the general storyline is that we are a random person that has gone out into the red zone which is effectively abandoned to the zombies in order to like find our fortune or something like it doesn't really explain too well however it would be nice if like around on like points of interest and in places like that you would be able to find yourself you know, for example, like notes and things kind of explaining the run up or you could find like an old cell phone with like a voice log on it. Little things of that nature to flesh out the game world just because it's supposed to be sandboxy doesn't mean that it has to be over the top sandboxy. Right, can I swap out some of Jorge's items? I was going to say if I can, he's only got a baseball bat. Thanks. So like show me your inventory. You can have one of these crowbars because the crowbar is way better than the baseball bat. You can have that shoulder pad too if you can wear it. I don't know if you can. You can also have that backpack because I don't know if you can wear that either. And then you can also have that bandana. And he should equip that stuff on his own, I think. Or maybe not. Okay, that's fine. One thing that I do like about the game is that there are a ton of character skins in this game. There's like 60 or 70 different character models in this game that can join your camps or whatever and they all have different clothing on uh despite what clothing they might be wearing all of the armor seems to layer in like a very very tasteful way like it seems to work quite well in fact there you go throw that bandana on so everybody knows that we're on the same team and we're rolling squad all right let's go uh, rescue this survivor over here i'd like to pick up two or three people before we head back that way our second base is fully populated with humans Honestly, what this game reminds me of the most is uh, Survivalist Invisible Strain. In the respect that, there are good ideas in here, and in fact, the game is fun to play. Uh, but there's kind of like a general clunkiness, I guess, to the combat and the movement. Like, with collision and things of that nature, it's very, very easy to kind of get, like, stuck on things or, like, clip through the rock right there. Little thing, who are you? Hey, where are you going? Oh, he's a mercenary. Okay, so there's random guys that wander around the map that are mercenaries, and you can hire them, kind of like SNES Shadowrun style, to follow you around for, like, X amount of days, and they'll just back you up and shoot things, basically. Uh, they'll just gun anything down that you deem to be a threat. And honestly, that can be kind of helpful, but why hire them when you can just kite the zombie horde into them and they will do that job for free? That's what I've learned. It would actually be kind of humorous if they programmed it in, since the guys are mercenaries, that, like, if you dragged mobs into them, uh, they auto-charged you money or they walked away, basically, and be like, that's a you problem. Like, something like that would actually be kind of interesting and kind of dial in the edginess of the setting that, like, maybe not everybody is quite as unified as you would think they are. All right, let's wipe these guys out real quick. 
we do get XP for these zombies. You do have like an overall general level that you can see right there. Uh, I'm level two at the moment. You don't seem to level up very often. Uh, leveling up seems to be somewhat slow. When you level up, there's no talent tree or anything else like that, but I would recommend that they add perks or they add a talent tree or something. Uh, just something to flesh out the leveling a little bit more. Uh, from my experience so far, whenever you level up, I've only played the game for about two hours, but when you level up, you basically get like a plus five to every single skill. And so it's still nice. I still enjoy getting level ups, uh, just due to the fact that it makes me flatly better at everything that I'm out here in the apocalypse to do. But that having been said, I do think that having like a limited perk tree or something like that would be really, really nice. So like, you know, one perk, whenever you kill a zombie, you gain one HP. You know, the thrill of battle basically causes you to be like, oh yeah, and revitalize. Ooh, there's another survivor over here too. Hey, you want to come hang out with me? There's also a traitor over here. So if I end up with a bunch of looties, where did my other survivor go? I don't know where my other survivor went. That's worrisome. Uh, we can't get through. Don't go out into the red mist. You're going to regret your decisions if you go out in the red mist. I promise you. It's a bad idea. Don't do it. Uh, the red mist, it hurts like hell. It's like, you know when you, like, change the cat box? And, like, sometimes you get hit with, like, that wall of ammonia. You know what I mean? And it's just like, woof! And, like, you can't breathe good. It's kind of like that. Don't go out into the red mist. Alright, so we've dropped off the new villager at camp. Caleb Thompson is following me. I'm gonna ask him his story, but like, I'm not really interested in hiring him. You know, I mean, he's got like a cool chess piece. Like, he's got like, he's only level three though. He's not like as dope as I am, man. Uh, do we have everybody here that needs to be here? Hey, looky there. Who's this guy? Oh, that's Jorge. I forgot I swapped out his, uh, I forgot that I swapped out his equipment, so I didn't recognize him. Uh, one thing this game does very, very well, despite the clunkiness of combat, um, is that the idle animations, actually. Like, characters in this game, when they're idle, like, you see Jorge right there, how he went and he sat down on the bed. Characters in this game have all kinds of idle animations. When they're, like, not in your party, or when they're standing around in between raids, they'll sit down on beds, they'll lean against trees, they'll lean against a wall with one foot up. Like, I actually really, really like that. It makes the settlement feel a lot more organic, even though the game really has no narrative quantity to be spoken of whatsoever. It's still, like, one of those little things that I'm like, oh, yeah, dude, that was pretty awesome. Uh, this place has no food. We got to supply food to the place. Let me go back real fast. We got to drop things off inside of here. More specifically, we need to drop off food. Uh, food is used for us to revitalize our yellow bar, but food is also used day by day for the base in order to keep things kind of up and running. Dude, is there zombies? Oh my god, there's zombies, dude. Uh, I need my crowbar. There is kind of a general purpose clunkiness to interacting with, like, radio stations and warehouses and things. And I think that's due to the fact that you can't break the animation. So let's say that I interact with the warehouse from, like, right here. My character will start to walk up to the warehouse... And along the way, if there's anything in the way, he'll kind of get stuck on it. Or he'll, like, dither for a minute trying to get around the collision. And there's no way to break off that animation from what I've seen so far. Your guy walking up to the workbench. Instead, I would recommend that they kind of just remove that altogether. And then, like, the second that you press E on any of these things right here, the window just pops up if you're inside of range. Uh, that actually was a big source of clunkiness when it came to the way that the game feels for me. Until I finally decided to just, like, shrug and be like, it is what it is. Anything good on this gray wolf zombie right here? Oh, wow. He did have some good stuff. Oh, he's got a breastplate? Hold up. Uh, there does seem to be a good item variety in this game. I think this is vendor trash only. Like, it's hard to say. An unpainted zombie breastplate made of durable fabric. Yeah, the zombies in this game are, like, semi-sentient. They're almost kind of like the super mutants from Fallout. Like, they carry guns and stuff. Like, they are zombies, and they clearly know how to make equipment and things. Uh, it's not really explained, but it seems like there's kind of, like, feral zombies, and then there's ones that are kind of like the super mutants uh, from Fallout, where they're, they're kind of like tribal zombies running around with guns and spears trying to kill everybody, but they do seem to have some kind of organization or, like, societal structure. I haven't figured out how to equip any of the zombie gear. I don't know if you're, like, able to do that. It says rest 
down here. I don't know if later on you, like, build a workstation that can restore this stuff to, like, human equipment or what. But I haven't really figured out a way to use it yet. We're going to sleep till tomorrow. Let's do that. In general, I've just been vendoring all the zombie equipment to... Oh, are we under attack? Oh, we're about to be. Okay. We should probably think about upgrading a facility then. We need 35 materials in order to take that up to level 2. We can also slap a different gun on top of it. And for 25 food, we can put people on guard mode. Let me see. I don't think I put all my materials inside of here. Yeah, we got 81 materials on us right now. Throw that in there. Uh, one thing I would like to be able to do is to upgrade the size of the warehouse. For whatever reason, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of ways to upgrade the size of your warehouse. And that's definitely a feature that I would like to have, personally. Uh, basically, I'm not asking for a lot. Just, like, one level up raises it by, like, 200, say. And you can, you know, level up the warehouse twice. And then it would go up to, like, 600 capacity. I find that I fill up my warehouses and things very, very quickly. With, like, loot and other random stuff. Okay, so now that I've dropped off all the materials in there, there is a workbench in this game. I haven't gotten to it yet, so, like, the cities that you take over actually get fairly large from some of the trailers that I've seen. Like, I've seen some trailers where they've got, like, 30 guys running around with machine guns firing at zombies while they're invading the camp. And so it does seem like the scale of this game gets somewhat larger. I haven't gotten there yet. As a first impressions guy, I usually try to play for a couple of hours before I make these videos, and I kind of get to where I get to. I feel like you put any more time into it other than that, it's no longer like an impressions video. It becomes like an actual formalized review. And frankly, I don't feel like I am intellectually or skillfully equipped to do full feature reviews. I just don't think that that's inside my wheelhouse. I used to be a radio guy, so I'm pretty good at just kind of monologuing and talking about things as they come to my brain. But when it comes to actually sitting down and writing a script and organizing my thoughts, I really have no press credential or background in any sort of journalism. And so, in all honesty, that always feels like a... Oh, it feels like that's going to be a pathway to pain for me. Uh, it feels like I already get chewed up on the internet enough without having to give people more excuses to chew me up. You know what I mean? Uh, there is one more person down here, but we got to figure out how to get to him. Yeah, little things like this right here where, like, you can't just, like, push past the bush. Like, things of that nature. It would be nice if your character had some kind of limited ability to, like, mantle over small stones and objects to get to where he wants to go, but unfortunately not in the game. I think I gotta loop all the way back down and around to the south if we want to get this survivor over here. Uh, you can't equip all these guys. Every single one of these characters inside of your base, if you are fastidious and you enjoy customizing your characters, uh, every single one of them, you can sit down and you can customize their loadout and their equipment and like what you want them to be doing. Like You can, you can do that. Or... Uh, the game actually functions fairly well with no input whatsoever either. Like, if you've got turrets, idle people will man those turrets. Uh, people that are not idle will kind of jump in on fights that they see happening. Thus far, I've never had any situation where I'm, like, fighting with a mob or whatever. And, like, I'm sitting there just being like, why is no one helping me? Hasn't been an issue. Uh, hasn't been a problem a single time while playing the game. And so I feel like while the while the AI is a little bit ADD addled and it will sometimes run off and aggro packs that you didn't want it to aggro, on the opposite end, it also is, for the most part, proactive and doesn't seem to leave you hanging if it can help it. Uh, I need to heal myself. And then I think it's probably a good idea if we heal Jorge as well. Let's see if we can get him. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, come here. Oh, I think he's still in, like, semi-combat mode for some reason. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, the gore in this game is pretty satisfying. As of yet, I haven't figured out exactly what triggers the gore or why the zombies sometimes explode into just, like, a mushroom cloud of viscera. Uh, that's not something that I've been able to identify. It just seems to occasionally happen. Oops, zombie dog. You got just all kinds of pro- Dude, you throw a bottle at me? That guy just tried to bottle me, dude. Poor form, brother. Poor form. On the plus side, with this new crowbar, we're killing the level fours a lot more effectively, so that's nice. Anything on the zombie farmer down here? He's also got some ammo crates behind him. There's another crowbar. I wouldn't turn down a crowbar. I'm not a big fan of bows. I don't really mess around with them, in all honesty. Like, we have... 
Ooh, we got a doctor's helmet, though. That's nice. A uh, doctor's helmet, it gives you doctor skill. That's, like, exactly what it does. Jorge, I need to heal you with a med kit. There we go. Mm-hmm. And then over here... We've got an axe and a little bit of loot. Um, I'll take the axe. I was going to head on up to... I was going to head on up to the trader after we got done over here. And oh my god, look at the time. It's already been like 40 minutes. Well, and that's like the proof in the pudding right there. Like, this is not a game that is not without, like, flaws when it comes to just kind of, like, smoothness. Or a smoothness and seamlessness. Like, I made the mistake of beating Hades a couple weeks ago. And Hades has completely and totally ruined me as a gaming impressions guy. Because now, after playing Hades, everything on Earth feels clunky to me. Like, it is the most seamless, like, smooth game that I've ever played in my life when it comes to, like, control. And, like, your character doing the thing you want him to do. And so, anyways. Part of that is just comparison. And it's not this game's fault. It's just that I just finished playing Hades. Which is one of the smoothest games I think I've ever played in my entire life. And so, like, there is a little bit of clunkiness to this game. I do find that the audio mixing is a little bit muddy and quiet. Uh, I had everything maxed out, like, legitimately. I maxed out, like, my computer audio. I maxed out the game audio. And it all still feels very, very quiet and sort of muddy and mixed together for me. And so, anyways, I kind of think it might be a decent idea for them to go back and take a look at the audio mixing and make sure that everything is kind of kosher on that front. Oh no, dude, the dog went out into the fog and I can't help him. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Stop standing around. Stop standing around. Hey, we hit level three. Nice. Uh, is my character's name Dick Chains? Yeah, it is. And you might be thinking to yourself, did Splattercat choose that name? Uh, Splattercat did not choose that game. By the way, there doesn't seem to really be any way to defuse the explosive zombies uh, without getting your party members blown up. Like, you can shoot them with a gun, but your party members are going to bum rush them with melee weapons. So you're either going to blow up everybody or you're going to blow up your party members. It's just kind of the way that it goes. All right, come on, guys. Let's get back to base. Well, anyways, this is Decision Red Days. And like I said earlier, I think the best thing that I can compare this game to, if you're looking for, like, the relative quality of the workmanship, it is kind of like Survivalist Invisible Strain. Like, it is an enjoyable game, but there is a level of polish that is lacking. So, for example, with kind of the muddy audio mix, uh, that can be kind of hard to hear and figure out, even though you have it all maxed out. I definitely think that that needs another pass and needs to be split a little bit more cleanly. Uh, the menus are not tooltipped with, like, pop-ups and things of that nature that let you know what particular stats or things do. I definitely think that's one of those things that could be polished up as well. Uh, I think that there's also an opportunity here... Uh, to clean up with like some drag and drop inside the menus and just kind of bring it into mouse control and, and get that going. But by and large, I have been enjoying my time with the game. It's fun, but there's just kind of a relative lack of polish here that people should be aware of. Now, there have been no crashes, and I haven't really had any like game breaking bugs. Uh, the stuff that I've had is like things that you've seen where you got to get caught on collision with like rocks and trees and boxes and stuff like that. And then, like, your, you know, if there's a zombie nearby, like, your party member, even though they're outside of aggro range, will be stuck in combat mode. And so, like, you won't be able to, like, heal them or, like, help them out or something else like that. So you'll be forced to deal with the pack before you can do it. Even though they aren't aggroed on you because your guy is kind of aggroed on them and waiting to go. Uh, it's just, like, little things like that. But I do think that with some elbow grease and some fiddling... Uh, I think this is one of those lightweight games that could end up being fairly enjoyable and unique because it does marry kind of tower defense designs with open world zombie apocalypse RPG ideas. And really, the open map is kind of like a load screen in between the different tower defense levels if you really think about it. They've just gotten rid of that load screen and, and turned it into a sandbox where you can mess around in between unlocking each settlement. Uh, some of the late game trailers that I've seen, the hordes look pretty impressive, and so honestly I'm looking forward to getting there. Uh, my name is Splattercat, this is Red Days, Decision Red Days. I will see you all tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet, but up until then, it's time for me to go. The clock is a ticking along. Hopefully I helped you out and I was worthy of the luxury of your attention. See y'all later, everybody.